Hello. Or I should do a little playing introduction like normal. Hello, and welcome to this week's live weekly warm up. This is actually very different than the normal live weekly warm up because we're actually going to be doing completely different material, kind of sort of, it's still warm up material. Um, but this is actually part of something even more special that I'm really excited to be bringing you all at the start of this year. What I'm going to be doing, at least for this week, potentially for future weeks, potentially even more often than once a week, depending on how much you all like this and, and if this is beneficial for all of you. Uh, but what I'm going to be doing is actually demonstrating some of the timelines from the Next Generation Clarinet Method. So I imagine uh, quite a few of you who are watching this own the Next Generation Clarinet Method, so this will be a fantastic resource for you. Even if you don't own the Next Generation Clarinet Method, I think this will still be a lot of fun and I think you'll get some good uh, information out of it, uh, and maybe it will uh, inspire you to purchase the Next Generation Clarinet Method. Um, if you are interested in that and you don't own it, you can check the link in the description or go to quickstartclarinet.com slash nextgenbook to learn more about it and check it out. The reason why I wanted to put this together is I feel like a lot of people might not be getting the most out of the timeline sort of aspect of the next generation clarinet method. I also think it's one of the coolest parts of the method. So I really want to make sure that everybody understands how it works, whether you have it or not. If you don't have it, um, you're still going to get a really good sneak peek of the book because I'm going to be doing actual exercises from the book. Um, you obviously won't have the sheet music to necessarily follow along with, but a lot of the exercises are really scale based. So you'll be able to sort of get an idea for it. Uh, this is also kind of similar to what I've done. It's sort of a mashup of also the live practice sessions that I've done where you just sort of get to see me practice. And that's exactly what my process is going to be here is I'm just going to practice and work through the timelines of the next generation clarinet method exactly the way that you should be doing it if you're working through it. Which brings me to my last sort of point for this idea, which is I think it would be absolutely fantastic if you sort of treated this as a challenge. So when you see me post one of these videos, you go in and you do your session as well. You can even do it alongside me and sort of work through it together, uh, sort of one-on-one -on -one working as a, a team uh, going through it together. I think that would be a lot of fun. Um, or you can watch this and then do yours on your own later, especially if you're not on the same timeline that I'm doing, it wouldn't make total sense to do it together. That being said, I'm going to be doing the sort of intermediate uh, second timeline, the mastery timeline. Uh, I think this is a worthwhile timeline for just about everybody to do, even if you're an advanced player. I think the only people I wouldn't recommend this timeline for right off the bat is if you're a very, very beginner. I think it's worth hitting the fundamentals timeline. Um, even the most advanced players, I would pretty much recommend doing the mastery timeline and then doing the application timeline, which is sort of the advanced level three uh, one. If you feel really good about your warmups and really good about your fundamentals, you can skip this one. Uh, but I don't think you can ever be too good at your fundamentals. And that's why I'm doing it because I'm going to get uh, some good stuff out of this too with improving my fundamentals. So I'm uh, glad you're all here. Uh, also, as always with the, the live streams, if you have any questions, feel free to just throw a question in the chat. Um, but without further ado, let's get to it. So let me see. I, I can sort of hold this up. Oh, but it might make that happen. And it might be kind of noisy. Sorry. <laughs> but I'm, I'll just hold this up real quick on this one um, so that you can see what the timeline looks like uh, to get a sense for it. So we're going to be working through these sessions. I'll read through it, um, but I just wanted to show you real quick uh, so you can see how it works. Sorry, that was probably super noisy. Um, I'm also have a new microphone and a little bit of a new recording setup. So I think that'll be kind of fun to experiment and try out. Hopefully this will give us better sound quality. Um, hopefully not just loudness of me banging it around. <laughs> okay. So for this first session, um, I recommend one or two sessions. So I'll definitely do it this week. Maybe do it next week or another day this week, uh, depending on how this goes. Um, 
for the first session, uh, we're going to be looking at pages 9 through 12 in the book, the sort of making a great sound part one. And the purpose, uh, according to the timeline that I wrote, <laughs> is the first step of mastering the clarinet is having a beautiful, consistent sound. As you explore the how to play clarinet triangle, consider how important these three variables are in creating the sound quality. Then do the exercises and scale long tones on the following pages to learn slash review, proper air support, embouchure shape, and most importantly, experiment to get the very best sound you can get on the long tones. Uh, one other thing that I should mention that is a big important part of doing these timelines, um, I always recommend doing the sort of Pomodoro technique and working through in timed chunks. So I'm going to go ahead and set a timer for 15 minutes, which is what I recommend for a session on the mastery timeline um, and get that going. And then I'm going to pull up the book and look at pages nine through 10 and do those exercises. So let me get that. Perfect. So the first exercise on page nine is the how to play clarinet triangle. Uh, everybody who's watched the YouTube channel before is probably familiar with what it is. It's air, embouchure, and tongue. Those are the three fundamentals, the main pillars of playing the clarinet really well. Um, so I'm just going to review those. Um, I actually made this graphic quite a while ago with the first version of the next generation clarinet method. Um, so it's great to review. Um, in this, I won't pull up my phone again and make everything loud and shifty, uh, but in this one, it's sort of a Venn diagram with three circles. And in between air and embouchure is clarity and fullness. So let me think about that just a little bit about how the air and embouchure impact the clarity and fullness. So from my knowledge, the embouchure is going to help the reed to vibrate clearly. And then the air is going to sort of give the support and give the, the shape to the sound. Uh, so when those come together, that's how we get a clear, full, resonant sound. Um, between embouchure and tongue, that's our response and articulation. That makes sense to me. Um, the articulation is going to be actually shaping the notes, uh, touching the reed, uh, and of course the response as well. The tongue, how the tongue is aiming the air contributes to response. Uh, how the embouchure is supporting the vibrations of the reed contributes to uh, the response as well. Then between air and tongue, we have focus and projection. I think those two variables absolutely make sense for that because the tongue is going to be sort of aiming forward, directing the air, giving us the focus to the sound and the focus to the sound gives us the projection. So the more dense and core and resonance to the sound, the more projection you'll have. And all three of them come together for a beautiful, consistent sound. So this is just good, just sort of like getting the, the thought process going. Um, you also can't see this, but on the page there's a little red play button here. So uh, if you weren't watching this, you could click on that, watch my video explaining uh, the how to play clarinet triangle, uh, which is a great thing to do when you're working through these sessions. I'm not gonna do that on these lives because obviously I know what I say in the videos, um, but it's a great thing to do as you're working through the sessions and thinking through this conceptual stuff, especially. So that's the, the how to play clarinet triangle. And I'm going to sort of think about those three variables uh, pretty in depth as I go through the next few exercises. So let's go on to the next one. Uh, so page 10 is the bullseye breath support. Uh, so I'm not gonna describe so much how to do this exercise. Um, again, you could definitely watch the video if you're going through this timeline, um, but the whole point here is to show me doing it. Um, so we could we could do it together, especially if you have the book with the instructions, um, but I'm just going to go through it. You'll get a sense for how this exercise goes as you watch. So read the instructions. Mm -hmm. So I'm feeling the air, I'm feeling the bullseye breath support. I'm experimenting with the distance on my hand. I find closer, it's easier to feel that really narrow uh, support, but I'm gonna see if I can keep that narrow focus as I move my hand away. I also feel like I don't start clearly, so I'm gonna be good with that.
Okay, I feel like I have a really good sense. The uh, air is super, super steady. It's getting to that steady point right away. Uh, great. So now try and playing the scale patterns on the following page while thinking about using the bullseye breath support and take your time to get the best sound that you can, focusing, of course, on the bullseye breath support. Um, great, so I'm gonna play some of these scale long tones now. Focusing on good, good sound. Great. Um, let me know. I'll leave a comment with how the sound quality is. Is the balance between playing and, and speaking okay? Uh, hopefully the playing's not too loud and the speaking too soft. Um, hopefully that's all balancing nicely and maybe this is a little bit better quality than, than normal since I'm just streaming to YouTube and, and using all the native stuff. So let me know. Um, so that was the first five notes of the C major scale for that uh, just C, C major scale long tones. Uh, there's four lines here. I'm going to do the A minor one next, which is the second line. So this is starting on A, still just using the same notes from C major, but since we're starting on A, it becomes A minor. And I'm really focusing on the steadiness of the sound, just like when I was doing the bullseye breath support and feeling like sort of wiggling around there. I'm trying not to have any of that as I play the, the long tone. So that's the first two out of the four lines. I'm gonna go on to the next page, which is the last page for today's session. Um, again, don't feel like you have to fit all of this into the 15 minutes of time. Uh, you can take as many sessions or as many practice sessions per timeline session uh, as you would like, and it's totally fine to do uh, uh, several, uh, as many as you want. Uh, but I'm gonna go on, because uh, I feel pretty good about the bullseye breath support. I feel like I'm, I'm aiming the air really well. Uh, so now I'm gonna go on to the one finger embouchure exercise. Um, so again, I'm gonna read through the instructions sort of just to myself. If you have the book, you can do this uh, along. Um, even if you don't have the book, you'll, you'll see what I'm doing. So I'm just gonna put my finger in my mouth and sort of suck on it like a straw and then try to bring that to the clarinet.
And as I'm doing this, I am thinking a little bit of a clarinet embouchure with like pointing the chin and stuff like that. It is possible to like do that if you drink your, your milkshakes like that. Um, but I think usually when we suck through a straw, it, we kind of naturally point our chin. Um, so I'm, I'm leaning into that a little bit, even though it is what I naturally do. Uh, as I'm doing this, I'm trying to be aware of all the aspects that are happening, not just sucking on my finger, but like, how does my mouth actually feel to do that? Okay, now I'm going to go back to the scale long tones. Uh, that's what the instructions say to do. Uh, and now I'm going to just do the third line and try to have that same embouchure. And you can even pretend to sort of suck on the clarinet. It doesn't give you the good suction because the air comes through it, but. Wow, I, I don't know how much that came over um, across the microphone and across the stream, but I actually genuinely surprised how much that exercise helped my uh, sound quality. That was really uh, interesting. I've, I've definitely done these exercises before, um, but I haven't ever, or it's been a really long time since I've really practiced them diligently. Uh, but yeah, it's, it's amazing how going back to those fundamentals really makes a difference. I'm gonna, I'm gonna try it again on the last line. Yeah, that felt really good. Um, especially thinking about my top lip and my corners. A lot of times when I do this exercise, I think about what my chin and bottom lip are doing. Um, but thinking about the whole shebang was like really, really helpful. Um, and thanks so much to uh, Abiola, Abi, yeah, Abiola uh, Augusto. Hopefully I'm pronouncing that correctly, uh, saying that the it's pretty clear. Um, hopefully that means that the audio is, is good um, and that maybe there's a clear difference from when I did the exercise to before it. Um, awesome. So that's uh, that. Um, I think that is a good stopping point. There's about a minute and a half left on my 15 minute timer. Uh, so I think I did, I, I got what I wanted out of the session. Um, maybe I could spend another minute sort of just thinking about this. Uh, what I am going to spend this minute doing is filling out, oh, dropping my phone. That's what I'm going to do. <laughs> I'm going to fill out the uh, sort of progress part of the uh, timeline. So first thing I'm going to do is with the sessions, I'm going to write in today's date of January 10th when I did the session. Um, the, I recommend keeping track of the dates. And again, you can do like 10 days of, of the same session in the timeline. Take as many times as you want. I feel pretty good about this one. I may come back to the one finger overture exercise and the bullseye breath support just because they really help with the sound quality. And I may mix those in uh, occasionally now that I know how those exercises work and I know they make a difference. Um, so I may do those things. And that's actually what I'm gonna write in the progress. Um, let's say, uh, 
First, I'm gonna say that I'm done with it uh, to just say I got that progress. And then I am also going to say, uh, let's see, one finger embouchure, especially helpful. And that's just a good way to have that uh, note so that I know what I'm going back to. Uh, as I'm sort of scanning through this, I can just see like, Oh yeah, I remember I really liked this exercise. That's an exercise I might want to do again. Um, and then I can go on from there. Of course, feel free to customize the way that you do these timelines as much as you want. If you want to spend more time per session, it's great. I would be hesitant to recommend spending less time because I think sometimes forcing yourself to get 15 minutes or at least really close to a whole 15 minutes even going through just a little bit of material like that can be really, really beneficial to make you think a little bit more about it. Um, I'm, I'm going to be completely honest. Part of the reason why I'm doing this is to sort of get back into practicing really diligently and, and sounding my very best. And it's been a long time since I really thought back through the how to play clarinet triangle. I teach it a lot, um, but I've never like thought really in depth about applying it to my playing uh, in a while at least. And the bullseye breath support and, and one finger embouchure, again, I teach those a, a good amount, um, but I, I haven't done them myself in a while. So it's always good to go back to the fundamentals. And like I said, I'm, I'm genuinely surprised at how much of a difference it made. Uh, there's a reason why I teach these exercises all the time. Uh, and I think that was, that was really helpful for even me. So hopefully it was helpful for you if you're following along doing the exercises. Definitely let me know if you enjoyed sort of seeing the timelines in action. I do think it's a nice combination of sort of getting to see me practicing, um, maybe finding some fun revelations that, that I find as well as we go through these for what exercises are really, really the good ones. Um, I think it's, it's hopefully something that you can get a lot out of whether or not you have the, the next generation clarinet method. So definitely leave a comment or just hit the like button to let me know if you're enjoying this. Uh, if you're really liking this, I may do it um, more often than once a week. Uh, I think I'm gonna try at least for a couple more weeks doing this to sort of uh, replace the live weekly warm up because we did a lot of good warm up exercises and got a lot of good stuff out of that. Uh, and like I said, I think this will be immensely beneficial to the people who do have the next generation clarinet method to see how working through the timelines work. So Leave a comment, hit the like, let me know how you felt about that. Oh, I just saw a like pop up. Thanks, thanks so much, whoever that was. Um, and I'll definitely be doing this next week. Uh, the one other thing I wanna say before we go, if you don't have the next generation clarinet method, check out the link in the description to go to quickstartclarinet.com slash next gen book to check it out. If you, uh, don't have it, but you're not quite sure you want to purchase it yet, check out in the description. You can go to quickstartclarinet.com slash sample. There's a link again in the description for that. And you can download a few sample pages. Um, the page with the bullseye breath support is in that. Um, there's also when I send the email with the downloads for the sample pages, there's also going to be a link in that email to a big presentation that I did uh, working through the exercises on the sample pages. You can also find that on the YouTube channel if you're here and, and looking for that. But if you want to download those sample pages, you can check that out as well. And that will give you a, a good idea of sort of what the, the program's all about. Uh, and of course, if you're watching this, you, you already have a good idea of the kinds of things in this. So I wish you all the best of luck for an amazing 2022 on your clarinet journey. Uh, I'm gonna keep making content and, and keep being here to help you guys out along on the journey. Thanks so much for everybody who's been watching, everybody who's liked, everybody who's commented on my videos. Uh, subscribe if you want to be sure to see when I go live with these again. The next one will very likely be next Monday at 1230. Um, there will definitely be one next Monday at 1230. Uh, I may do another one before then, sort of deciding uh, how that goes. Um, so thanks, thanks for hanging out, and I look forward to seeing you all next Monday as we go through the next session in the timeline.